My name's Shane. Welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. Uh, uh, this episode, I'm going to be installing the uh, uh, worm drive gear for the power down feed on the new Acro mill. I thought I'd take you guys along, show you uh, as best a step by step as I can do, and uh, point out some some key things along the way that are maybe beneficial to somebody. And uh, also maybe just give you guys a little more confidence to tear into yours if you have an issue with it. So uh, that's what's coming. All right. So we're going to tear into the head on the acro mill and put it back together. Uh, also wanted to real quick give a shout out or uh, uh, call attention to some new shop stickers I got for my hopefully soon to come wall of YouTube uh, channel stickers uh, first one I got Stephen Lang Shark River machine really cool dude um, he has a pretty cool channel um, sorry I'm a little tired <laughs> it's at 6 30 in the morning and I just got done with the mill so I started way earlier than I probably should have um, got Greg, my little mule, he has an awesome channel, does a lot of cool, uh, rebuilding old equipment, he has a series on the bridge ports, uh, probably a little more in-depth than what I just showed you, but, uh, I was curious if, uh, that, that was going to work out for me, so, <clears throat> I thought I'd let you guys be curious too, <laughs> Uh, last but not least, uh, Tom, Hilltop Machine Shop, or Machine Works. Uh, he always has something cool on his channel. Always, uh, always has something, uh, uh, there's always something to learn from his videos, or something cool to watch. Has a really sweet GNE, uh, uh, Universal Shaper, um, Again, forgive me, I'm a little tired, too. Um, but, yeah, they're... they're uh, check those guys out. Check all those guys out. They're really good channels, really interesting content. And um, I guess that being said, let's get right into it. Uh, go take you over to the workbench first. Uh, and show you what I got going on with the cradle assembly. And then we'll go to the mill and show you how it all goes together all right hang tight all right guys we got our new gear maybe in a little better shape uh thought real quick i'd take a minute here show you guys how these come apart it's relatively simple uh basically pull this cap head screw out you can pull this ring gear off and then there's a set screw here. This whole this whole shaft, there's a bushing here that that set screw holds in place. You want to make note of the way that comes out because the, the hole is offset, at least on this uh, imported mill. <clears throat> but this whole thing will come out and you can disassemble the shaft and replace that. Uh, one thing I wanted to note uh, on this Acra, it has a little built-in spacer and if you get a like a bridge port replacement everything's the same but it doesn't have that spacer so you have to make a spacer for this side um, just to take up the slack um, between your bearing and the gear there's a little bearing inside of there that has to seat um, other than that that's uh, pretty good <clears throat> I mean, it was a good fit. It was a, the key was the same, diameter inside was the same, the gear teeth are the same. Um, this one did have grease on everything, uh, probably because there was a grease zerk in the head, but it's actually an oil zerk. This is supposed to have, in a bridge port, I believe, just spindle oil, which would be like a velocite number one, maybe. Um, 
manufacturer on this machine calls for uh, Vactra Vector number two oil so that's what we put in it I did put a little assembly lube on it that's the red you're seeing um, I think these will get a little bit of the red and tacky number two grease because nothing really oils those uh, but I believe I'm glad I pulled it apart when I did because the spindle bearings are fairly quiet now and tight but I believe that the oil is supposed to come oil this and then drop down and oil your spindle bearings. So that leaves a little bit of question. But like I said, the machine was quiet and tight, so I think we might have caught in time. Um, yeah, because there's, there's no other grease circles on this entire machine. So <clears throat> that's that. Uh, next step is to drop this back in the head, uh, which needs thoroughly cleaned out because all this brass went somewhere. So I went ahead and did that already. And it's cleaned and ready for the uh, cradle to go back in. So I'll take you over, show you that, show you how to do that. Um, relatively easy, pretty straightforward. But it's kind of interesting, so I thought I'd share. All right, I'll get you the, uh, the head on the uh, Acromill and bring it back. Thanks. All right, guys. Got you at the top of the mill. We have our cradle assembly here. And I'm going to show you how to put that in. Uh, basically, these gears go in this little bore here. And there's a set screw. Uh, and its only job is to locate itself in that slot. Not real tight, just its job is to keep this from, you know, lifting or lowering in that hole. But otherwise it needs to be able to swing. So, um, we're just going to set that down in there. I don't know if I can do it with one hand or not. We're going to try. Might need both hands. All right. said his job is just to slide on in there distinct feeling I'm going to need both hands here but uh, that's about the gist of that and then your your knob goes in this hole your lever and that'll swing this back and forth uh, in or out of drive for your power down feed so give me a second I'll put it in I'll bring you back All right, here we are. The uh, cradle assembly is installed. <clears throat> uh, I found it actually beneficial to pick up one, your change gears. You actually have to, to get that shaft down in the pilot hole. Uh, after that, slid right in. Uh, as far as this, this bolt, I can see it or not. This bolt here, where is it? Here. Um, I did clean the threads out in the hole and on the bolt and use some blue thread lock um there's a vibration in these heads or any machine really in general it is enough to shake that loose it's it's not a bolt like i said that gets all the way tightened uh it's it has to leave this range of movement it just retains that from falling in or out that is how that works that is in and that will ride on you can see that little worm gear down there. Um, it's out. It's off. Engage your transmission. You see, spins nice and free. Go reverse. Spins nice and free. Free wheel. And we'll leave this out 90% of the time is you want to save yourself the hassle of doing this um if i mentioned it i did replace my my oil line that's all buttoned back up so next step our back gear housing needs to make it to the top 
but it needs cleaned out a little bit first. And once that's on, uh, the bull gear is the only part of these heads that should really be greased. Everything else should be oil. Uh, that being said, I did put a little bit of grease on my downfeed gears. <clears throat> because it, it doesn't look like there's a lot of opportunities for that to get oil. And I'd rather have a little bit of lubricant and, uh, you, you know, then starve it. So what I'll probably do is run it for a little bit and then I'll pull this cover back off for your gear selector and, uh, see how we're looking, see if it's getting oil. If it is, maybe I'll clean them off and just re oil them <clears throat> with the recommended oil. But, uh, for now, this is what we're rolling with. So I'm going to get that. Uh, back your housing cleaned up and get her sat back on and I will bring you back All right, so this is our back gear housing. That's the next thing we're going to put on um, There actually is an oiler here And that fills this cavity if you can see that And runs through this hole um, There's some oil grooves That would appear the oil runs around in and greases your pinion for your back gear. Um, we've lubricated this, all vector number two, and then the bull gears are going to get grease. Um, got most of the old belt out of there. I'll probably go over it a couple more times here, try and get a little more out. But I just I, I did put a new some new oil in the cavity here just so I'm not filling all day through the little oiler but I'll get that on and then we will put our uh, bull gear and pinion or worm gear assembly on <clears throat> grease these gears up and be ready for the next part so I'll try and show you what I can it's uh it's oddly high uh, of a work area so it's kind of difficult to place the camera um, I'm trying not to show you too much of my messy shop. <laughs> it's like a bomb went off in here now. <laughs> so, let me get that up there, mount it on the machine, and we'll, I guess, bring you back. All right. All right, so, we got our back gear housing on. We've got it set. Uh, basically... Let's see that. That is fully engaged. And this is fully disengaged. Uh, I did measure. Actually, I'm not going to take that off because there's a keyway in there that you've got to be careful with. Um, I did measure uh, against this back edge here. There's a, a plate that keeps your back gear bearing and back gear in um, I measured off of that to get my my depth make sure that was right and double checked it um, so everything should be good there I then went and just applied grease to my my bull gears uh, there is a grease circ on the back of the head on this side just for that I also before I stuck this on filled up the oil well that we saw in the front here so I didn't spend all day you know filling through that oil kit um, next step we we need to put our timing belt pulley on and then we can move on to our pancake assembly uh, so wanted to make a note real quick this does not need to be super crazy tight uh, normally the way you put them on you can just hold a screwdriver against your uh, your spindle here and just give it a little tug just a hair over snug nothing crazy that thing's not going to go anywhere lock washer on it um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on, on the uh, acro back gear lever because it's a little different than a lot of other ones so it's a lot different than my jet I think it's different than the bridge ports uh, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much but 
I can show you. It's pretty simple. Uh, not a very difficult process. Just watch what you're doing. Make sure everything's free, everything's quiet, everything has play. And here, that's super quiet spindle bearings. Everything's cleaned out now. Everything's got oil. I also wanted to make a note now that I said that. Uh, everything that I'm putting together is getting a skim coat or a, a real light coat of the Vactor number two that this head calls for. So, yeah, nothing at any point is going to run dry. Um, all right, I'm going to get the pancake set up with my new timing belt that actually, you know, has some teeth and slap that on. All right, so, so bring you back I lost then. my audio, but uh, basically here I'm describing. Uh, I put the pancake housing on uh, with the new timing belt. Uh, the way to do that is put your belt on the smaller pulley, which is on the bottom side of this housing. And as you're slipping it on, you're sliding the cogs onto your larger pulley. Um, and then from there, we installed our variable speed drive pulleys right there new belt uh, that's retained by a snap ring at the top and um, that houses the hub for your variable speed control uh, that your speed selector plate ultimately bolts to uh, and then I go into a little bit of detail. Uh, when you pull those off, the, the method for doing that is to run your head to the lowest speed with it running. And that will, um, that will close, no, that, I'm sorry, that will open up your uh, follower pulley, if you will, that's on the motor. And that gets it low enough that you can see it sitting on the back of the mill here. Um, you can use two of the three bolts for the access cover on the bottom side of your pulley guard or pulley cover and uh, they fit in two bolt holes in your hub and that will keep that assembly together if you should need to pull it off for any reason uh, like your motor won't turn or you, you can't get it to run under power <clears throat> Uh, and then with the machine off, you want to turn your variable speed to the highest setting. And that will just give you the most room for getting that belt off. Um, so that's what I was explaining there. So moving forward, probably at this point explaining what I just explained, and then the next step will be putting that cover back on. Uh, I did not touch the variable speed settings. All I did was unbolt the plate and bolted it back on. You know, in uh, after this clip here. Um, Otherwise, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, relatively uh, intuitive to figure out. Um, I think in a minute here, I show a clip. I still didn't put my gear selector back on for my downfeed range selector knob. Uh, I get there. I do get there. <laughs> this was this was a lot more interesting when I actually had. Yeah. Um, audio working so I apologize for that it's, it's an ongoing problem that I've been having uh, hopefully I get that resolved here soon all right guys got a little bit ahead of you uh, got the belt guard on got the motor on Got the uh, variable speed controls all hooked up. Uh, this is the hole I was talking about. There's an access cover here. 
and two of these bolts uh, will fit in in this little spring hub for your your variable drive, variable drive pulley and keep that all in one piece if you should need to pull it over here um, and what in turn uh, the, the, the way to put it on you tilt your motor back uh, and try and slip it on through this hole ultimately getting frustrated pulling this cover off and actually getting it <laughs> so that's how that happened uh, so all I really got left to do is a little bit of uh, I gotta switch some wires on the plug I want two wires any two wires three phase thing uh, motor was running backwards so we're gonna get it running the right way um, pull these two bolts out let that thing spring get all my lubrication points bolt that cover back on and we'll be ready to rock and roll see how she see how she sounds see how she works so I'm gonna do all that and then I'll bring you back take you on a little test run see how we did and I think that'll be a night all right hang tight all right guys lost the footage there uh, for this the first time around but we got her engage her in forward fire it up and that belt got a little bit of noise to it I put the new belt on but uh actually I didn't put it in here I took it out uno momento por favor all right now see that's turning now that didn't happen before Now we got power down feed. See what happens when it hits the trip. I believe I'm happy with it. This catches in here a little bit. Have to address that. But yeah, I think I think that'll do her for me. All right, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. If you didn't subscribe, feel free to. Uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up or a comment. Uh, it all helps helps the algorithm. Um, I guess all that being said. I'll see you on the next one.